Right, here we have the Lafayette HA600A. I'll tell you why this one's here in a minute. You've probably already seen the video I made about this one, the, uh, the KT340. That's the valve one, this is the transistor one. Okay, this is rather nice. A bit of a tinny sort of sound to it. It's the, the knobs are a bit plasticky compared you know, with this one here. This one's really nice, uh, solid. Um, but no, that, that's progress for you, I suppose. Um, it doesn't matter too much. This is a bit of cheap pressed steel. Um, the whole thing is, what is it? Uh, build quality, that dreadful term people use these days. The build quality, or the build isn't so good, whatever the term is. It's not made as well as that one. That's the way to put it. Well, worry about this build quality nonsense. So, okay, what I did, I found a station on here around six megs, uh, which was sort of fairly, you know, fairly weak, but perfectly audible. You could hear it and all right. So then turn the volume down on this, find the station on six megs here. I couldn't find it. I thought, uh, okay, this is uh, this receiver's a bit deaf. So I found a really strong station on here on 6 megs, you know, sort of S meter was way, way over, really strong. Go to this one, absolutely dead, I can't find anything around 6 megs on this one at all. Okay, what's going on, I've got everything right, a lot of interference coming in on here, a lot of low interference and local interference, all sorts, so it sounded very lively. Duh. <laughs> okay, the knob. Here, the, the band knob, the wave change knob, had slipped on its shaft. So instead of four, what was it, four to 14 megs, I was on, whatever it is, 14 to 30 megs. I was actually listening on 13 megs. In the end, I, got, I turned the signal generator on, six megs, this picked it up. Nothing on it, I even put it straight in the aerial socket on it, nothing. And then I found it on 13 megs, I just tuned everywhere. Uh, right. So, when I got them both on, on six megs, um, I found that they're, they're pretty good, they're about the same. You would think this one being a later model and transistor that it would be better. Um, it kind of is, but it isn't. That doesn't really make sense, does it? It is better, but it isn't better. <laughs> I don't like the tuning on this. It's, it feels plasticky. This one feels more solid. This is a smoother tuning, smoother action somehow. It might just be me, I don't know. Um, the audio on this one sounds like a tinny little transistor radio, you know. This, this sort of thing. Sounds a bit cheap and tinny. Whereas on this one it sounds, well I suppose it's valves and transistors again. This one sounds quite good. Um, I suppose that doesn't matter too much. The, uh, the build. <laughs> <laughs> the build quality, I suppose, doesn't matter too much. It's how they work, how the receivers work. Up on the higher frequencies, say, I don't know, 15 to 30 megs, especially like 20 to 30 megs on this one, it's it's not bad. This one, I think, is a little bit better, to be honest. I, I think this has got some aspects of it that are better than this one, and vice versa. So, yeah, there you go. I mean, they're both... They're both pretty cheap these days. Um, you know, you can pick one of these up on eBay. I don't know how much. That one cost me 30. I think, I can't remember. I think this was about the same um, quite a few years ago. Don't I don't know where I got this one from. I can't remember. Um, I've actually got another one of these that was given to me. But, uh, there we are. That one's put away. So, yeah, there we are. I think they're, they're sort of much the same, both of them. Another thing I did, I turned the volume down on that and I was tuning around here and I was getting so-called birdies. You probably heard of birdies, you tune around, there's a massive carrier <laughs> somewhere on the band or, or, or several spots, you've got a massive carrier and that's what that is. You take the aerial out and you can still hear it so you know it's not a radio transmission. It's something being produced within the radio. It's normally um, you know, the oscillator uh, harmonics from that, the mixer putting out other other frequencies. Um, so you, you end up with birdies, as they're called, sort of carriers, phantom carriers everywhere. Um, 
anyway, I thought that was very disappointing until, again, duh, <laughs> it's not my day, is it? This one, someone's built a crystal calibrator into it and it was switched on. So I'm picking up the crystal. Yes, right, moving on swiftly. I suppose for general coverage receivers, general shortwave listening, these aren't too bad at all. Um, what I tend to forget, I think, is that this is, what, 1960s, early 70s, this is mid 70s, I don't know, late 70s, I don't know when. So they're pretty old. Um, oh, by the way, I've, I've also compared these two um, with the Eddystone, the Eddystone receiver I showed you on the other video. Uh, the big Eddystone, the, the 910 stroke one. Uh, I've discovered, I thought that was 61, 1962, but I found a website that seems to know what it's talking about. And um, on Eddystone stuff, they've got a lot of info. Um, and they reckon 1957. So that's, yeah, that's getting on in years, 57. Anyway, the Eddystone was every bit as good as these two, uh, even though it's 57 and this is 70s late 60s early 70s um, but of course it's far better built and the tuning on the Eddystone as you saw in the video as I said there it's superb the tuning not spots off both of these um, and yeah as I say uh, as a receiver as the performance it's certainly as good as both of these so there we are one thing about this one I suppose it might be an advantage the transistor one it's got a 12 volt socket on the back so you can use it in a caravan or motorhome or whatever. Um, I suppose it might be quite interesting you know, have it in, the, in, the, in your motorhome, sling up a bit of wire and have a tune around shortwave or use it as, a, as an ordinary radio. Oh yeah, that's one thing. This has got long wave um, as well as medium wave. This one hasn't got long wave, it's only got medium wave. So if you want to listen to the cricket on BBC Radio 4, go for this one. <laughs> So there we are. Um, if you want to do any serious shortwave listening, then I mean these are okay for, uh, as a, a bit of a hobby. You know, these are sort of fun receivers. Um, I've always thought the best thing for serious shortwave listening is an amateur radio transceiver. I've got the Kenwood TS570D um, opened up, so it doesn't just do the amateur bands; it does everything. Um, <coughs> long wave right the way through to 30 megs um, it's a, that is a good receiver so you know you can do some really serious stuff with that uh, single sideband AM FM um, so you know you've got everything the the only thing I, I think is I don't know it's probably me being old-fashioned now showing that I'm an old git uh, the fun of listening around on this sort of thing when I was you know like young I remember one night I didn't have one of these I forget what I had I was tuning around shortwave I was about 12 13 years old something like that tuning around shortwave and I heard this uh, this station this woman's voice saying this is Tel Aviv this is a test transmission please reply in condition B I always remember that never forget it and it was sort of wow Tel Aviv that's Israel I'm hearing Israel you know, what's what's this reply in condition B? It was exciting. Um, and if also if you tune into a station, shortwave broadcast station, you think, well, what's this? wonder where this is coming from. Um, and you had to wait until the top of the hour or something, and they will normally say, you know, you're listening to radio. And as they're about to say the station, there'd be a burst of interference or the QSB, that the signal would sink down into the noise, then come back up again, so you miss it. And you have to wait even longer. That was the fun of it. These days, you <laughs> if you want to know what station you're listening to, you read out, oh look, you know, 14 point so and so, put it into the computer, up it comes, oh it's Radio Peking, China. Uh, there's no, I don't know, the fun's gone. Anyway, that's just me being an old fool. Um, <coughs> yes, what else? I think that's about it. Um, don't know what to do with all these receivers, as I said before. <coughs> um, I think the next one, if you can see it, yes you can, the, the R1155, I'll probably drag that one down onto the bench and uh, give that one a go, just give you a quick demo on this, does it, 
Does it even work? I don't know. There we are. That's, that's that one. This uh, this generates a lot of noise itself. I I've found as well. Um, but uh, there we are. That's the band spread's useful. That's the German station around six meters. Yeah. I don't know, as I say, it sounds tinny. I suppose for a communications receiver, you don't want a lot of bass response. Uh, but um, I don't know. It just sounds a bit tinny to me, but there we are. It works all right. I suppose it looks pretty, if you like that sort of thing. But um, there's no Q multiplier on this one as there is on this one. Um, and I, I haven't actually looked inside either of these. Oh dear, let's turn that off. So there we are, that's the, the Lafayette HA600A, the transistor version of that one. Great, thanks for watching, bye bye.